previously in the original signatory of the Global Interfaith Commission's declaration, uh, some, uh, as chair of the Parliament, the Parliamentary Humanist Group, I would say, exceeding uh, my authority. But um, I'm delighted that this conference has built upon the foundations laid by that declaration and has agreed the Global Interfaith Commission's new uh, safeguarding principles. Um, I'm not myself a man of faith. Unlike many of my generation in the United Kingdom, the major organised religions once seemed to be the buttress of social order. Challenge and difference were hardly welcome, and the condemnation of homosexuality by any major faith group could largely be taken for granted. Each of these faiths appeared to dress up existing social norms with the trappings of tradition and moral principle. And each of these faiths helps reinforce what I learned with every insinuation about LGBT plus people, every piece of ridicule, every stereotype, cruel or even well intended, that there was something wrong with me. It is very difficult to love yourself in this environment. I can't claim that the loss of my face was a reverse road to Damascus. Rather, encountering the plurality of competing doctrines and gods, I struggled over time to accept exclusive claims to truths of any single faith. So began my journey to what I understand as humanism, which I base more or less on the central Christian commandment of love thy neighbour as thyself. But first, one must master the self-hatred that every facet of the society in which I was born, including the church, reinforced. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, during my lifetime, religious appreciation of difference has shifted dramatically. This conference is a witness to just how much has changed, not least in your shared ambition for a ban on conversion practices. Yeah. It is still the case that too many LGBT plus worshippers remain frighteningly vulnerable to the help and guidance of bad actors who try to fix what isn't wrong. Mm. What LGBT plus people really deserve is affirmation and assurance that they are beloved of their God and are part of the divine. In more humble, secular terms, everyone should have the right to be themselves. And to not only be accepted, but celebrated for their difference. It is this profound shift in religious attitudes to LGBT plus people that underpins the principles agreed at this conference. In my role as chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group on Global LGBT Plus Rights, some of the most forthright and potent advocates for LGBT plus rights that I now encounter are religious leaders. Leaders who are aware of historic wrongs, but equally committed to a future where belief in the dignity and rights of LGBT plus people are as central to religious faith as they were once alien. These principles are a great first step. In LGBT plus advocacy, legislators like me tend naturally to focus on what we know best, the law. However, the fullness of our lives is not denoted by the extent of the law. We can find examples across the world where decriminalisation has not proved the route to social acceptance and conversely where social change has left the law redundant and unenforced and for the time being at least unenforceable. Religion often exists in the gap between legal theory and lived reality. The adoption of these principles is a welcome sign that religious faith can be a place of refuge for LGBT plus people as much as straight and cisgender people, even or especially when they are failed by society or the state. But whilst we can probably congratulate ourselves here, if we are to embed this change in society, religious leaders and people of faith must go even further. If, as is my wish, homophobia and transphobia 
will never again be able to make use of religious teaching as a figure to hide behind. Religious groups must not only affirm LGBT plus people, but advocate for them. The battle is not won. Anti-LGBT plus laws are today under consideration in Hungary, Ghana and Florida. The debate around trans rights is starkly lacking in kindness and compassion. LGBT plus positive religious voices are needed now more than ever. In each of these campaigns, it will not be enough for religious leaders to remain bystanders in the face of this kind of discrimination. Equivocation or obfuscation will be insufficient. Faith leaders cannot claim that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. To affirm the dignity of LGBT plus people in one space, while in another members of their own congregations and other leaders in their faith or denomination campaign against our most basic rights. So I know I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> As religious leaders committed to LGBT plus equality and to embracing LGBT plus people within your ministry, I cannot think of a better late start than the principles agreed at this conference. Empowerment, protection, proportionality, protection, partnership, and accountability. I am <laughs> of the momentous efforts and sustained campaigning it has taken to get this far. Our duty is to help ensure that your efforts are harvested and husbanded, and not simply left to spoil. I thank all of you, from the bottom of my heart, for being part of this most profound change. A change that has allowed me to learn to love myself, and from that foundation, to be able to love my neighbour, and to make my contribution to a better world. Thank you very much.